my talk is about fine-tuning auto instrumentation. Uh, who I am, I'm Jamie Danielson. I work at Honeycomb. I am an approver on OpenTelemetry.js, except there's an open PR for me to be a maintainer. Thank you, JS folks, for that. So exciting. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some different languages. I don't just want to talk about JavaScript. Obviously, not everyone writes JavaScript, even though a lot do. Um, so what I want to look at is instrumentation options that we might have for a few different languages. Um, and so we're going to start with, you know, what is automatic instrumentation? And there's probably a few people who might be grimacing or cringing and really nervous about this question. And so I will go ahead and say that it is complicated. Um, this particular uh, talk is not going to get into all of the various details about automatic instrumentation. Sorry, you don't have to read all of that that's on the screen. It's more just to say that there is an open issue, again, and as Severin notes in there, this is an issue as old as the project because deciding what automatic instrumentation is or isn't is, uh, it's more than just pedantic. It really is making sure people understand uh, what to expect, what kind of options they have when they're instrumenting their apps. So this is not really going to go into that specifically. I am going to be talking about some different options, some that are you know, zero code, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment, some that have a little bit more programmatic setup. I hope I don't confuse things too much in the meantime for anyone. It's more just a matter of giving you ideas of what you might be able to do with your app that you may not be aware of today. So the general idea of zero code and low code is zero code generally means you are not touching your actual code source when you want to instrument your application. So this might mean that you have some environment variables or you are running an agent next to your app or something like that. Uh, and generally you don't have to touch your source code. That's sort of the general rule of zero code instrumentation. And low code, um, again, iffy, there's a lot of hand waving here, but uh, you have to make some changes to your source code. Usually you're gonna have some kind of programmatic setup when you're initializing your SDK, some options that you might have for your instrumentations. Um, usually it's gonna mean that you have a little bit more flexibility with configuration options, which you'll see in a minute when I go through some of these examples. Uh, obviously the ideal scenario we get to one day that we've talked about a little bit already today is that libraries will you know, have their own telemetry baked in that we can work through there. Uh, but what I want to look at is what we do have available today, right now, so that you have actionable things you can do today and know that that might continue to evolve over time. So the, the main languages, the main things that I want to look at right now are just to show a little bit of differences that are out there. Uh, so I'm going to look at Java, JavaScript, specifically Node.js server side, not so much the browser right now, and Python. And I also want to spend a little bit of time looking at what sort of options you have if you implement or if you use an open telemetry collector in your pipeline, uh, some things that you can do there after, after you've done your instrumentation and before it gets to your back end. Um, and again, one thing you're going to see as we go through this, um, it might sound like a broken record at this point, but we do have some different options in the different languages. Um, you know, both because of how the languages are themselves. They have different idioms, different ways of doing things. Some things are a little bit easier to implement in one than another, but also because we have different levels of involvement, bandwidth, history, all sorts of things that we have with these different uh, SIGs, with the different projects. So um, it almost sounds a little bit like an excuse, but it's also kind of true. So um, hopefully that kind of helps the TC uh, panel just before gave a little bit of that explanation as well, which makes me feel better talking about it. Um, so yeah, so having all that out of the way then, we're gonna look at a few common instrumentation configuration options that people think about doing. It's a mouthful. Um, we don't have to go through too much right now. We're gonna go through one at a time as far as uh, looking at turning on and off specific instrumentation libraries, uh, spans, uh, enriching your, your uh, spans with some header attributes and some of the things that you can do with the collector as well. So the first thing we're looking at is enabling and disabling specific instrumentation libraries. Now, a general rule that's usually very useful is that you want to only include the instrumentation libraries that you need for your app. So for example, if I have an app that uses the Express.js framework 
and then it needs HTTP instrumentation, maybe I only do those. But we also live in the real world where we want something that's a little bit easier to use immediately. Maybe we have less access to uh, make some changes in different places or we want to be able to get started as quickly as possible and then from that point start taking out the things that we don't need as much anymore. So most of our languages are gonna have some kind of meta package that does uh, pull together multiple instrumentation libraries that you can then use and then they give you the option to enable or disable specific libraries from there. So the example starting out uh, is for Java. Um, again, the Java agent now has all the instrumentations included by default, and there are a ton. Um, if you've gone to you know, the OpenTelemetry IO website or you've gone to the GitHub pages or anything like that, you'll see that there is a lot available there in Java. And that's going to be kind of a theme, actually, um, if you're not already aware. Um, Java, the SIG, the language, everything that you guys are doing is really amazing. Fangirl here. Um, and as a general rule, you'll see a lot of Java implementing things first and doing things very thoroughly, very comprehensively, and other languages then following suit from that point. So usually we'll see a lot of options available in Java. Not all of them will be available in other languages, but some of them are. This particular example uh, is going to look at Right, so I have all of the instrumentations that are already there, but I only need a few. The main way that they talk about doing that is to say, disable or you know, all the common default ones enabled, I wanna set that to false. That's essentially disabling all of the instrumentation libraries at once, and then I can go through one by one and only add in the desired instrumentation that I actually need for my app. Uh, so for example, I disable everything first, and then I go through and add one at a time, whether that's you know, Kafka or Apache or whatever else it may be. Um, and then I'm trying to see, yeah, or alternatively, um, what you'll also see is I don't wanna think about just the ones that I need. Again, I wanna keep it simple, so I'm only going to uh, disable individual ones that I know that I don't want for one reason or another. We're gonna have a similar thing with JavaScript. Uh, there is an auto instrumentations node package. Um, some people love it, some people hate it, but one of the things that it does have is all the instrumentations available for open telemetry uh, right there from JS Contrib. And so what we have there is again, uh, environment variable options to be able to either enable, again, just specific instrumentation options that we want, or uh, soon, I'm not sure if the new release is out just yet or not, but we can also just disable one instrumentation at a time. You may have seen this uh, in some docs occasionally where folks might say, hey, I just want to disable the FS instrumentation as an example. This is one of your options of doing it in JavaScript if you are doing this in code as opposed to just environment variables. When we look at Python, we also have something very similar. Uh, Otel Python disabled instrumentations equals whatever library I don't wanna have. So requests, for example. Um, but same thing, you'll see it's kind of a pretty, pretty generic thing that you're gonna see through most of the languages. This is a, a pretty common configuration change. The next, wing, the next one that's sort of interesting is when you wanna ignore spans based on criteria. Um, and this is going to differ by language for sure. As we go further, we're going to get more and more specific. Uh, so this one, for example, again, Java has a ton of options available. Uh, one of the things, I think I skipped a, a thing here, but that's fine. Uh, one of the things they have um, as an example is this experimental option for uh, the span suppression strategy. So what that has, you'll see it in the docs as well, where you might have a database client instrumented that uses the reactor Netty HTTP client, which in turn uses Netty. What that ends up meaning is you end up having multiple spans that are sort of giving you the same information in your backend, and depending on what backend you're using, you may be paying for all of those spans, and you may say, I don't need all of those. Either they're expensive or it's more than I really need. So Java has added in this option to have this span kind suppression strategy, and what that does is instead of getting a client span for both the HTTP and database instrumentation, you end up with just your database client. So again, you're kind of getting rid of your duplicate spans that are sort of giving you the same information already. They also added this in, um, which is pretty neat, where you can enable, it's uh, enabled, it's not enabled by default, uh, but if you wanted to get more granular and say that you wanted to instrument specific controllers and views, uh, they've added that option as well. I don't think I've seen that, something like that anywhere else yet. Um, 
Yeah, so then if we look at JavaScript. So before I showed that example of disabling FS instrumentation, that's a little bit heavy handed, especially if there are actual times that you're interested in instrumenting file system calls. So a common thing that you might actually want to look at instead, instead of disabling that entirely, is this require parent span option, which just says that I only want to instrument these file system calls if they're already part of a trace. So I don't want all the things that maybe start as my app is booting up, but I am interested in them if they happen later on in an actual trace that's doing other things. Uh, another option is with our HTTP instrumentation, as an example, there may be some, uh, some calls that you don't care so much about. So if these are calls out to um, you know, get your static assets, maybe these are just very simple things. I don't wanna have that instrumented because it's quick or it doesn't matter, or it's not a big deal to me. So we have these hooks that are available that you can also disable those uh, different URLs. Uh, I think that's the one that I already talked about. Okay, uh, and then for Python, we have a similar thing where we can disable instrumentation for certain URLs, uh, pretty similar to the JavaScript one that I just looked at where I could say I don't want to have these health checks or these specific uh, paths. And Python has also gone a little further here too where depending on you know, how many different instrumentation libraries you're using, you can say for these specific instrumentation libraries, ignore these spans or exclude these URLs from your instrumentation. Uh, one thing that has been coming up a little bit more often is that folks want to have their HTTP request and response headers available as attributes on their spans. So what we're going to see that's kind of interesting, um, I think it's something we'll probably, I don't know the current state if it's changing with semantic inventions as we're all still evolving and all of that, but we have a very similar option between Java and Python for capturing request and response headers uh, and describing what those headers are that we want to have. I think the, the Python one, so this is Java, I'll go back in a moment. Python you'll notice is very similar except the environment variable name, both very long, slightly different from the other one. So you'll wanna make sure to check out what those environment variables are when you want to use them because they are a little bit different language to language, at least the last time that I checked. For JavaScript, we're mainly just going to look at uh, having this available in code. Um, this isn't yet available as an environment variable option today, but if you are configuring instrumentation in code, you also have those options available. So those are some, nowhere near all, that's not super comprehensive of some of the things that I've heard about of common requests for configurations that people wanna do for their automatic instrumentation. I wanted to spend a brief amount of time talking about the collector as well. Um, also a fangirl of collector. Uh, it can do so many things. And I know that um, I think Evan's going to be talking about it a little bit later, so I don't wanna steal too much of his thunder. Um, but I'll just talk about a couple of things here as well that may be an option that you may or may not be aware of. So a quick intro of collector is that you can send your telemetry to a collector from your app. Uh, you can process it, transform it, batch it, do some different things, and then export it to a backend. So one of the things that's kind of interesting here that we've heard a lot is I want to drop span events. There are certain span events that are just not useful for me. Maybe they're noisy. Uh, GRPC span events um, or other instrumentations that may be a little bit much. And maybe the instrumentation doesn't have that option available for you to disable it. So what you can do is if you have a collector, you can use what's called a filter processor. And that filter processor allows you to set some rules to say, I don't want these specific things in my telemetry. So as an example, here's a thing to say, I don't want span events that are for gRPC. They're too noisy. So I can throw that in there and now that will be dropped before it goes to my backend. Another option on here is uh, filtering, dropping based on library name unless it's an error. So you can start getting very uh, verbose and descriptive in your, um, you know, what you're looking to drop. One of the big things that I do wanna point out, um, and one of the reasons why it actually took us a while to even implement the feature of dropping spans is that it's also a foot gun. It's very easy to now have broken traces because you are taking spans out of a trace that don't expect to be taken out after the fact. So you're losing context um, and that's just something to be aware of. The idea is I know what I'm doing, you know what you're doing, okay, go for it. But definitely be aware of that, of that's one of the possible uh, side effects that could end up happening if you do 
uh, if you do drop spans at the collector level. Another option that's available is redacting uh, sensitive information with a redaction processor. Uh, just a simple example of you want to remove everything except description, group, and ID. Uh, that's an option for you there, too. I'm going a little bit quick. These are all really well documented on the GitHub repo and also on opentelemetry.io. Uh, just, again, wanting to give a couple of examples. And the last one that I want to talk about with the collector is related to, um, you know, updating your attributes with the collector. One of the common things that this had come up with is when it came to the HTTP uh, attributes and the stabilization effort, uh, some folks may be aware that different languages are in different states as far as what version they're using, and so therefore their telemetry might be emitting the same type of field, but with a different name. So one thing that we have available to us is the transform processor in the collector that uses OTTL. And what this can allow you to do, I have a small snippet, is to say something like, I have HTTP request method, and I want to also have HTTP dot method on that span because my other language that I'm working with is still using HTTP dot method. Uh, and having that both ways is as well as the other HTTP attributes, this becomes really useful for making sure that you have sort of parity with your spans of similar types like HTTP um, without having to worry quite as much about um, them being at different, uh, different levels. Um, so just sort of finishing up as a recap, I did finally put the quotation marks around the automatic <laughs> instrumentation on this part of the presentation. Um, just knowing that there are a lot of instrumentation configuration options available to you. Uh, and also with the collector, you have a lot that you can do there as well. I think it's important to point out um, that, you know, things are going to keep changing and evolving. And a lot of this, as I said, is what we have available today. I think it's good to think about um, what Ludmilla said earlier in the, uh, and it was talked about more in the TC panel as well of, you know, we all want to know how can we customize our telemetry in a meaningful way. And when it comes down to it, we want to have meaningful telemetry that gets what we need, ideally without having to do too much on our own. You know, we want it to just kind of be built in, available to us, and give us what we need. Um, so that is still ultimately a goal. And so we'll see some of these instrumentation options changing, ideally more of them becoming available natively integrated in the libraries as they're written. Um, but hopefully some of these ideas uh, help, help give you an idea of what you can do in your apps to be able to configure what your current telemetry looks like. And that's all. Thank you, and happy instrumenting. I don't know if there's any questions. I think there's a couple of minutes. file config yeah that's a great question is that is that a hand up to answer that question or is that an additional question and so for folks who maybe didn't hear that question the the thing that Daniel asked was I showed how some of those environment variables are subtly different um, but really trying to do the same thing and obviously that's not ideal if you're working across languages so there is this uh, config file sig and project that's ongoing and one of the things they're trying to do there is to stabilize those uh, environment variables make sure that we have that consistency across the different languages It depends. Um, so I think it's going to depend on the instrumentation itself as far as how it's set up to work that way. Um, I don't know that I have an exact answer off the top of my mind. I know that was one of the things that Java had documented for why they were enabling the view and controller 
uh, instrumentation as options so that you wouldn't lose, say, some of the HTTP spans that you might if you were disabling the entire library. Um, but I do think that it depends on the implementation of the instrumentation. Thank, oh, one more. Oh, like are you able to change it mid-process? Are you able to make changes to your instrumentation to say adjust those environment variables or increase telemetry? Um, I don't know that that's a common thing. Uh, it depends on the use case, I guess. Um, I don't think that's a common thing. Dan, what do you think? Yeah. 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 The one idea I had in mind that someone had showed me that was very neat was uh, basically using like feature flags for adjusting certain environment variables um, where you might have like hotel log level feature flag and when they flip that then they're able to um, get more information but I think yeah speaking from the JavaScript side I'm, I'm not aware of another option. Good point, and for anyone who didn't hear that, that's a shout out also to be aware of the OpAmp project that lets you uh, kind of remotely configure your SDK or your different setups. Um, it's still ongoing and evolving, but there's a lot of exciting stuff coming with that as well. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you for the whirlwind of <laughs> going through everything. Appreciate it.